Welcome to the CCVO Capacity Building Webinar Series. I'm Tracy Braun, Manager Programs at CCVO. This series is focused on topics that will help nonprofit professionals and the organizations they work with build their capacity and strengthen their impact. Thank you to our sponsors, Land Solutions and Altitude Communications for their support of the CCVO Webinar Series. Welcome to CCBO's new Capacity Building Webinars, created to provide you with learning and resources on demand and on your schedule. These webinars will cover topics of interest to nonprofit professionals, all at no cost to you, thanks to the generous support of our sponsors. With me here today are Mark Allison of Land Solutions and Marshall Anderson of Altitude Communications to share a bit about why they've chosen to partner with CCBO. Mark? Thanks, David. Land Solutions is really proud to help CCVO present these webinars as flexible learning opportunities for the nonprofit sector. As an IT solutions provider, Land Solutions offers small to medium sized organizations the flexibility to work how they want, from wherever they want, by leveraging the power of the cloud. So, sponsoring these webinars is a natural extension of our work. Very good, thanks. Marshall? Yeah, we feel the same at LC Communications. Uh, we're a uh, cloud provider of telephone and communication services and we saw the direct link between the expert content of these webinars and what they're trying to promote which is productivity and efficiencies to the viewership and uh, we were able to marry that with our own passion for, for driving those same productivities and efficiencies to our customers by leveraging our platforms. So we're very happy to sponsor this programming. Uh, thanks to you both. These webinars would not have happened without your generous support. If you're new to CCBO webinars, please take a minute to look through the complete listing of topics and recordings available on our website. This webinar is pre-recorded, but that doesn't mean you can't ask questions. We encourage you to ask, add your questions to the chat window because we'll be sharing them with speakers for a follow-up blog post. You'll be able to find the link for the post and the recording of this webinar on our website after the release date. For this webinar on partnerships, we're joined by Jocelyn Daw. Jocelyn is a recognized leader and change maker in building authentic multiple sector partnerships. She has built a career bringing diverse parties into partnerships and more importantly, keeping them productive and progressive. She is also an internationally published author and consultant, as well as an accredited partnership broker, associate and partnership practitioner trainer for the Global Nonprofit Partnership Brokers Association. Thanks so much, Tracy. Uh, and as, I, as Tracy was mentioning, I'm an associate of the Partnership Brokers Association, which is a global uh, nonprofit based in the United Kingdom, founded in 2002, that is devoted to promoting professionalism and new approaches for effective multi-stakeholder partnerships with a real focus on sustainable change and impact. So today we're going to focus on four key learnings. The first is really the fact that partnerships can be really rewarding, add an enormous amount of value to the work of all of the partners, the communities, and the beneficiaries. And for sure, the, partner, the future is collaborative. So the question is, can we raise the bar? Can we get better at partnering? So let's start with learning number two, which is what do we mean by the word partnership? It's become a very overworked word and looking at different types and attributes that really can help us think and act differently when we move forward in setting up partnerships. Third, we're going to then go a little deeper and start to look at what do we need to do? How do we need to think and act differently in order to raise the bar on partnering. And this will look and discover the art and science of partnering. And final, we, finally, we'll talk about how partnership requires a new form of leadership. And that this new form of leadership is critical if we're going to get the stronger results and value add that can come from effective partnerships. Earlier this year, his Holiness the Dalai Lama made a simple but profound statement. If bees can do it, we can do it too. He was referring to collaboration, working together to achieve greater outcomes than we could create on our own. Or as we often say about successful partnering, making the whole greater than the sum of the individual parts. His Holiness went on to observe that bees collaborate even without strategies or business plans. They combine and leverage each other's strengths to survive and thrive. 
In contrast, he states, human beings have constitutions, complex legal systems, and police forces. We have a remarkable intelligence and a great capacity for love and, and affection. Yet despite our many extraordinary qualities, we seem less able to collaborate. Partnerships are becoming critically important as we look at how to address our shared challenges and sustain effective community services. And I know many of you listening today are already involved in partnerships. So our task today is not to convince you of the need to partner, but to give you the insights and skill sets to partner better, to raise the bar on partnering. And given our prevailing aspirations towards deeper systemic shifts that address our shared challenges, can we set our sights on partnerships that are ambitious and that are capable of deliver delivering stronger, more transformative change versus simply transactional or adaptive improvement? Partnerships can be highly rewarding. They have the potential to create new and groundbreaking solutions to existing problems. They can add value to the partners, including increased credibility. They even improve access to new resources, enhance skills and capabilities, and provide a wider influence on policy and practices. But partnerships can only achieve these things if we're ambitious and skilled enough. I believe that most of us want to collaborate more effectively and build deeper multi-sectoral partnerships. We want to achieve the significantly better outcomes possible with effective partnering. There isn't a lack of interest or even willingness. There's a lack of executional skills, knowledge in all sectors. We get stuck on the how. One of the keys to successful partnering is not by doing more and more partnerships, but by taking the time to choose our partners judiciously and, to, and strategically, to focus on a few high quality partnerships rather than a whole stable of partners. And successful partnering requires intentionality, real effort and commitment of time and resources. So this must be done with, with care and attention and great consideration. And in partnerships, how we work together is as important as what we do together. The level of project success, the breadth and scope of ideas generated and the time and energy it takes is largely determined by the effectiveness of the partnership. The good news is partnership skills can be learned. A partnership mindset can be embraced. If we take partnering seriously, build our partnering readiness and capacity and are bold and ambitious, we can get better results together. I want to start by defining the word partnerships. It has become, unfortunately, a bit of a cliche, a blanket phase that describes many business as usual transactional relationships that really do not qualify as partnership. The word is often used as a smoother to make organizations and funders who often demand them feel better about the work and meet funding requirements. As a result, partnership is losing its true meaning and disguises the real challenge in building meaningful collaborations. The word needs to be used with clarity and the same level of attention that is required to make them a success. So the Oxford English Dictionary defines partnership as an ongoing working relationship where risks and rewards are shared. But this definition is a bit narrow. So working with my partnership broker colleagues from around the world, we've identified effective partnering attributes. Having a shared understanding of the word partnership and a commitment to share both the risks and the rewards. And a shared purpose that is jointly defined and then accounting for individual partner interests and needs. Co-creating the activities and the partnership work and sharing decision-making leadership. Having everyone contribute some resources, not just financial, but others that could include skills, knowledge, uh, networks, credibility, and then making a commitment to accountability to each other as well as to the clients and the community. And taking a principled approach and paying attention 
to the partnering process. And there are different types of partnerships. The Partnership Brokers has defined three types. Each one has unique traits and can add value. Leveraged or program partnerships have long been a way for working for many organizations. They're usually between two or more similar organizations and they help to stretch scarce resources further and deliver more value per dollar. And program partnerships are quite common today and have almost become a standard business practice for many organizations. The ecosystem and system change partnerships allow for more ambitious, ambitious transformation results over time for beneficiaries, partner organizations, and the larger community. They affect positive change in the way organizations, communities, and leaders address a shared priority issue. It goes beyond a program and focuses on a cause or a major concern in the community. They then activate new ways of working together to achieve, achieve sustained change and eventually making institutional changes in policies, practices, and deployment of resources to further increase transformational change. These types of partnerships include not only organizations with shared mandates, but often have high leverage partners whose expertise isn't necessarily directly in the area of impact. For example, one partnership I was involved in supporting around transforming early math literacy in Calgary included some obvious partners, the school boards, the University of Calgary's Faculty of Education Early Math Teacher Training Team, and a national nonprofit focused on early math literacy, Jump Math. But by engaging the funder, Canadian Oil Sands, along with the Calgary Public Library and the Boys and Girls Clubs, the program reach was expanded and the impact stronger. Creating new opportunities outside of the traditional school ensured more vulnerable students could be part of strengthening early mass literacy. And by bringing in these ecosystem and change, there was this opportunity to involve non-traditional partners and alliances, where there was business, nonprofit, academic, and the public sectors working together to co-create innovative solutions for more expansive outcomes based on the diverse contributions each one could make. So how do we build these more transformational partnerships? It can be challenging work, although very rewarding, because, but no partnership is the same and everyone sees the partnership differently. But in spite of this, there is a way to genuinely work collaboratively, co-creatively and constructively with others, even with people who have vastly different approaches, needs and preferences. But the fact is, the way to effectively partner cannot be defined in a simple top 10 partnering tips list. It involves both a lot of art and a lot of science. It's as simple and as hard as that. The art side of collaboration oils and fuels a strong partnership. It's the grease between the conflict within the process and the formal day-to-day -day mechanisms of running a partnership. It's the people and culture piece. It's about forming a collaborative mindset, about intentionally building a principled, values-based approach to partnering. So what does this look like? The first is to really embrace diversity to deliver innovation and new value. To be successful in partnerships, we have to be willing to break through our assumptions about other organizations and section, sectors and our preconceptions about each other. We need to understand our, each other better and be, to be able to embrace diverse approaches and perspectives. We fear that differences of approaches and views will lead to divergence, conflict, and even partnership breakdown. It is this fear that can undermine a partnership before it even begins. But if we take the time to explore each other's motivations, values, and underlying interests, the partnership will benefit from diversity, which is really part of the secret sauce of effective partnering. 
we have to be prepared to challenge and balance power to build equity. Effective, strong partnerships do not dismiss anyone, nor do they elevate anyone. Everyone who is at the partnering table is important. Equity is a core value where everyone who is in the partnership has been chosen because they bring value. Then they're given a voice and are truly appreciated for their contribution. Power dynamics hold back a partnership and it's often the reason they fail. And power exists in any relationship. The power we think we have, the power we deny we have, the power we're oblivious to. Successful partnering is about how carefully or thoughtlessly we use that power. By building equity between all partners, we build inclusiveness and respect. That helps us feel safe and free to express ourselves, essential to effective partnering. Being open and honest for authenticity and trust. All partnerships move at the speed of trust and trust is a core foundational principle. It's truly a place where a partnership will soar or plummet. Stephen M. R. Covey equates trust with confidence. The opposite is distrust, suspicion. When you trust people, you have confidence in them, in their integrity, in their abilities. When you distrust people, you are suspicious of their integrity, their agenda, their capabilities, or their track record. And trust doesn't just happen. It takes work and patience to be earned and maintained. The good news is trust and trustworthiness are a learnable skill, a value that can be communicated. Partnerships that operate with high, high trust significantly outperform those who do not cultivate trust as a core value of their work together. Shifting competing interests to create win-win partnerships for deep commitment. In the nonprofit sector, and, and in fact, in government and business, we often have a zero-sum attitude. That is, there's a limited amount of resources and by one organization getting some, others must be denied. As a result, we can compete for perceived limited resources, financial and others. We compete for the best people, the best opportunities, and this scarcity mentality holds us back. A partnership is successful to the, to the degree that it is win-win for those involved. The degree to which we replace the traditional us versus them mentality with the new us together mindset. We want to reach a place where the partnership ensures that every partner works to achieve not only the shared goal, but simultaneously each other's goals. This is an important starting point to build commitment and engagement. This is a simple mindset shift that can deliver significant results. And above all, we need to be courageous in the face of the inevitable uncertainty. Find within yourself and your organization the courage to try, the courage to build the bridge while you walk on it, the courage to work and live with ambiguity, accepting this phase is transitory but necessary. It's the courage to ask questions, to be curious and not to fear new solutions to work differently in consultation, to regard setbacks as iterations rather than failures, to push on with your experimentation to create bigger, more expansive outcomes. Partnership is the courage to stretch yourself and challenge your assumptions, to move beyond simple narratives and solutions, thereby embracing the partnership idea for richer and deeper results you, than you ever thought possible. The science side of collaboration is made up of the strategic plan, process, and structures that hold the partners and the partnership together. It's a clearly articulated shared purpose that places the beneficiary impact and engagement and benefits from partnership. It is a strong partnership framework and structure that supports partnership success and helps create part positive results throughout the partnering process. It's the practical things like good pro project management, governance, record keeping, and continuous learning. Using the partnership cycle provides a framework to help build the science of good partnership. 
Working through a project cycle to build and track a project delivery is a familiar territory, but in a genuine ongoing partnership, something more is required. Systematic attention needs to be given to the evolving needs of the partners and to optimizing the partnership over time. A strong partnership where respect of interests and commitments are understood and incorporated leads to robust programs, a new way of doing, more sustainable outcomes and higher impact. The partnership cycle provides a useful framework to navigate the partnership over time. And this is in addition to, not instead of, a project cycle. Trailblazing organizations will work with radical intentionality building partnerships with thought and care, and the partnership cycle supports this effort. Let's look at each of these phases in sequence. Although partnerships often do not follow the cycle systematically, they move back and forth based on what is needed and fit for the time and the purpose. Regardless, all phases of the partnership are critical for planning and thinking about at the beginning and throughout and that will enable successful and, and effective collaboration. Scoping and setting up and design of the partnership. When a partnership is built, the strength of its foundation is key. The foundation is the anchor that supports the entire structure, holding it strong and steady during daily operations while providing the basis for under, addressing potential challenges and shifting needs. A strong setup and design phase is critical to maximizing results and adding value for the partners and the project. It also enables a more collaborative spirit and provides an important framework for positive interactions. Too often, partners jump immediately to the partnership work and getting started. Taking time to scope and design the project work and the partnership Structure allows the partners to understand each other's respective values, motivations, possible contributions. Ideally, partners should reach agreement to partner only after considerable scoping has taken place, plans considered, and relationships built. So this process involves in this first phase, jointly scoping and identifying who potential partners might be, co-creating the purpose of the partnership and then really exploring each other's interests, constraints, expectations and the resources that each can bring. Embedding the partnership principles and differentiating between the partnership and the project. Mapping and the resources and then jointly creating a plan for moving forward and then co-creating a detailed agreement that will underpin the partnership. Taking the time to build the relationships and map and plan the work allows for partners to build relationships, determine if partnerships make sense for the organization, and if they feel confident enough to sign a written agreement. It's also worth noting that after doing the exploration and finding that interests and goals are not aligned, it is perfectly acceptable for an organization to choose not to partner. Disappointing, but far less so than for months or years into a project finding no one's interests are being served. As one partner from an $8 million partnership that I helped support with a review explained to me, the greatest investment you can make in your partnership is spending time at the beginning, creating clarity of purpose, understanding each other's needs, constraints, and being clear around roles, responsibilities, and decision-making processes. Taking the time for candid, honest conversations up front will allow for a smoother, long-term partnership where all feel invested. A wonderful quote. Managing and maintaining. Once the partnership begins and you've carefully designed the work with clear delineation of roles and responsibilities, it's easy to assume that everything will go smoothly, but lack of partnership experience, poor communications, too many comings and goings from partnerships and reverting back to a business as usual approach to work can be challenges that arise and the partners 
must consider these as they begin the partnership work together. Here the partners need to carefully monitor their governance arrangement. Is it appropriate? Is it working? Help the partners work through complex internal and external challenges. Build the capacity of all the partners to really strengthen their own ability to contribute and then to really optimize the partnership. And finally, to really help all the partners explore new ways of transforming the work. And this comes from strong leadership, positive tones that encourage staff to learn and balance collective and individual interests, embraces flexibility, and provides strategic guidance. Partnerships also have to start delivering project results. Partnership isn't always the answer. And if the partnership is not achieving its goals and creating new value for the partners, momentum can be lost and it's easy for partners to lose interest. Some early wins are really important and a sense that you're moving in the right direction. But that involves keeping an eye on those early wins, staying focused, and working to deepen engagement of all the partners in order to get the positive impact and results from effective partnering. The partnership process needs ongoing reflection time for continuous learning and improvement. There's an important saying, you don't learn from experience, you learn from reflecting on that experience. It's important not to go from challenge to challenge without giving partners time to reflect on their work together and then to use those lessons to improve. Often in partnership, the project gets re reviewed, which is important, but also critical is reviewing and revisiting the partnership itself. Checking on the health of the partnership can range from being as simple as going around the table at the end of each meeting to a far more structured and in-depth evaluative approach that considers the partnership and the partners in more fulsome process. Looking at how the partnerships is working, are the right partners there? Are they improving their, their work by working collaboratively? The final phase of the partnership cycle is sustaining outcomes phase. Partnerships are a journey, not a destination. They are a means of achieving greater outcomes and impact, not an end in themselves. And partnerships are meant to conclude at some stage. However, far too often they die a slow death, leaving any positive outcomes and impact to fade away. There will come a time often planned for when the partnership in its current state must end. Perhaps the goals have been achieved. Maybe there's need for more innovation or rethinking the work. Regardless, this phase needs to be managed with the same degree of care and attention as was given in the beginning to building and managing the partnership. A rushed unplanned end has the potential to lessen the value of what has gone on before, however good. This phase must be co-created and co-managed by the partners, which could include celebrating success, innovating for new results, sharing the learnings, or finding new ways and partners to strengthen the current outcomes. As partners work through the partnership cycle, one of the questions becomes who manages the partner partnering process? Partnerships require a new form of collaborative leadership. The challenge is to form robust partnerships that can move from the exploratory phase to design, development, and impl implementation as seamlessly and reasonably as possible. All too often, however, partnerships fall short because the partnering process is not well understood or effectively managed to overcome the inevitable project challenges. So who will play this vital role? Who will take the lead to draw the partners together to consolidate strong working relationships? Who will ensure the partners agree to suitable governance structures, operating procedures, and give the partnership itself priority when others are caught up in their own organizational work? Collaborative leadership requires a special sense of purpose. 
In successful partnerships, partners invariably find someone or generally several people to take on the role of being a partnership broker, even if, even if it's intuitive and unofficial. Their hard work with the partners by, behind the scenes may not be formally recognized or sometimes even obvious. Partnership brokers act as facilitators, coaches, navigators, and evaluators. They're the ones who call out the elephant in the room, keep the partners working together, the ones who keep everyone on track and ensure progress is being made. They support and strengthen partnerships throughout with innovative and skilled management of the collaborative process. And partnership brokers can be internal, operating from one of the partner organizations by rising above their own organizational needs to serve the interests of the partnership. Or they can be external, called in to provide unbiased, specialized support when needed. Partnership brokers both serve the partners by helping them shape, manage, build, and review their partnership. Professional and skilled partnership brokering can and increasingly does make all the difference. A focus on the partnership and the partnership mindset is critical to creating transformational results we all aspire to. And everyone in a partnership benefits from learning the skills of how to partner and partnership brokering to aid in building effective partnerships. Collaborations between organizations are a long game that require intentionality, dedicated effort, and patience to set them up and manage them. Done well, one plus one equals five times the results and value. But they also are more work. Partnerships can't just be an add-on that is done off the corner of someone's desk. They must be in considered a core part of a person's responsibility and an organizational strategy and integral to the way an organization works. The logic for partnering is simple. Current modes of service delivery are often unsustainable or ineffective in addressing our large systemic issues. We all have the resources we're gonna get. No one organization has the capacity or skills to address our societal challenges alone. And these challenges are shared. They don't belong to just one sector. We all need to be part of addressing the issues that affect and belong to us all. This creates the opportunity for a radical rethink, not just on what we do, but how we do it. The future is thus about supporting citizens and managing our community to work differently, to raise the bar on partnering to work between the lines, blurring roles, tra challenging traditional ideas about the purpose and capability of multiple sectors and how we work together to create common good. Partnerships are part art and part science. They're a group activity that can achieve great success through individual effort. They require focus on the project and partnership success. We have to get comfortable and innovative when working in them. They can be highly rewarding with time and effort, but to create them, we must be prepared to lean into that. We must be prepared to be ambitious in what we can achieve through human ingenuity and common purpose. And partnerships are not a flavor of the month. They are here to stay. The challenge is not that partnership will lose popularity, but rather the partnering bar will be set too low. Partnerships must grow and evolve to turn in what could become the new normal, but we must be bold and ambitious in how we establish, manage, and support them. We must raise the partnering bar. Our task today and beyond is to prepare for the collaborative future that really will be so essential for a sustainable, just, and, com and inclusive communities that is going to be vital for our shared future. When we partner, there are many things out of our control, budgets, timelines, sometimes even who's exactly at the table. 
but what is within our control is our ability to learn new skills, to shift mindsets, to manage unproductive behavior, and to foster collaborative habits. We can learn to love what is possible and unknown and love the impossible and the known. Then we'll be able to partner effectively across sectors, creating ecosystems to drive greater value and impact. In so doing, we can support each other, collaborate better and achieve transformational results, just like the bees do. So today, our main idea is that partnerships don't happen overnight. They're a long game and it requires intentionality, dedicated effort and time, and they can be highly rewarding in terms of the outcomes and impact that can be created for the beneficiaries, the organizations, and the community. So when we look at it, our first takeaway is partnering is a process. It is not an end in itself. It takes hard work and intentionality if we're going to maximize the value and raise the bar on partnering. We need to understand what we mean by the word partnership and identify the key attributes that will make a partnership successful. And then look at the different types of partnerships and how that will impact how we set them up and how we engage people in helping with partnering. Then to be effective, partnerships need to take a uh, art approach and a science approach, a values-based approach in terms of how we work together and how we work together is as important as what we do. And then using the partnership cycle in partnership, in collaboration with the project cycle to really help guide the work because the success of the partnership is dependent on how the, on the project work, is dependent on how the partnership works. And finally, partnership is, requires a new form of collaborative service leadership. A skilled partnership broker or bridge builder can make all the difference in building an effective partnership. If you're interested in going deeper, we, with the, part, with the uh, Calgary Chamber of Voluntary Organizations, the Partnership Brokers Association, and my uh, company, JS Dawn Associates, offers practical hands-on training courses for those interested in more deeply understanding everything that we've discussed today. We've presented very high level some of the key elements of building effective partnerships. But by spending the time to really go in depth, it will build your mindset and your skill set and provide you with tools to really help you partner effectively. We have courses in Hamilton, Vancouver, and in Ottawa. And here in Calgary, we'll have a course from November the 16th to the 19th. And that course is eligible for the Canada Alberta Job Training Grant. You can also find further resources at my website or the Partnership Brokers website to really help you on your partnership journey. And if you'd like to get in touch, you can reach out to me and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Jocelyn, for sharing your expertise with us. I look forward to reading your thoughts on the follow-up blog post. Thank you as well to our sponsors, Land Solutions and Altitude Communications, to the CCVO team who worked behind the scenes to produce this webinar, and to you, the audience, for spending this time with us. All the best until next time.